ஹலோ டியர் ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் கிரீட்டிங்ஸ் ஆஃப் த டே வெரி குட் ஆஃப்டர்நூன் டு ஒன் அண்ட் ஆல் த நெக்ஸ்ட் டாபிக் மென்ஷன்ட் இன் யூனிட் நம்பர் டூ ஆஃப் மைக்ரோப்ஸ் அண்ட் என்வரான்மெண்ட் ரைசோஸ் பியர் அண்ட் மைக்ரோபியல் இன்ட்ராக்ஷன்ஸ் பாசிட்டிவ் அண்ட் நெகட்டிவ் தே டோல்ட் அஸ் டு டிஸ்கிரைப் திஸ் டாபிக் இன் வெரி பிரீஃப்லி because in microbiology this topic is a vast and so much contents are there so since it is uh, for an open course we are going to make this very simple with a very limited description and a very few examples and this is one of the important uh, topic rhizosphere and microbial interactions positive and negative and first we will discuss what do you mean by a rhizosphere okay a rhizosphere it is a particular term that denotes to represent the soil around the plant root that means to say the root that is present in the plant that makes contact with the soil and this term is first coined by Lawrence Hiltner and he coined the term rhizosphere so this means plant root interface plant root junction okay a word originating in part from a greek word called rhiza this is originated from the word called rhiza that means root okay and rhizosphere may be defined as the area around a plant root that is inhabited by a unique kind of micro organism the area present in the plant root where a unique population of micro organisms are attached and they uh, depend their survival for this plant root and this microorganisms influenced by the chemicals and so many nutrients released from the plant root okay the microorganism get attracted to the plant root due to the release of certain chemicals and nutrients from the plant root and there are three types of rhizosphere based on the location where it is present one is endorhizosphere next one is rhizoplane next one is ectorhizosphere now first one is endorhizosphere this is the portion of the cortex and endodermis these are the few cut i might i think you might have studied this particular things in your zoology in plus 2 class okay so a portion of the cortex and endodermis these are the two important regions that is present inside the plant root okay so a portion of the cortex and endodermis in which microbes and cation can occupy the free space between the cell in the inside the root there are lot of space between the cell that is known as apoplastic space okay and in this particular space were microbes and cations that can uh, occupy is known as endo endo means inside okay endo rhizosphere next one is rhizoplane this is a medial zone or middle zone directly adjacent to the root which include the root epidermis and uh, mucilages okay root epidermis is the outermost uh, i mean uh, hair like a projection that is known as epidermis and uh, the mucilages that is the secretions that is present by the plant root that is known as rhizoplane okay next one is ectorhizoplane that is the outermost zone in which extend the root that extend from the rhizoplane outside the bulk soil okay so the root that is extended towards the outside soil region is known as ecto 
rhizosphere ecto means outside okay endo means inside so this rhizosphere is not a region particular particularly we can define based on the size or shape it will constantly change okay so but uh, it consisting of a gradient in chemical there is a variation in chemical biological and physical properties that change both uh, radially and longitudinally along the route okay so from top to bottom this the concentration or the location the gradient of the chemical the biological uh, content such as microorganism and the physical property will be changed so that is the very very important uh, types of uh, things which i wanted to tell and this is a, a schematic representation what i have told this is a plant this is known as the root okay if you take a small region if you enlarge this is known as the root okay the big rhizosphere and this region is known as rhizosphere and we have seen and uh, you know in the previous class we have discussed the nitrogen fixation certain bacterial nodules such as leguminous plant that will be produced in the root nodule then outside there is certain secretion called the mucilage there you can see root carp okay so that is a root border here you can see lot of microbial cells you can uh, see okay and that is produced this uh, things are produced by lot of uh, i mean uh, uh, component so that is attracted by the microorganism both the bacteria that is we have discussed the cocci bacilli all those things okay and they look they near the uh, this root region they will uh, i mean reside and if you a small portion if you cut from here you can see there is a lot of space between in this cells okay Th that is known as a ectoplane okay so that is the an ecto that is that is what is known as the uh, the uh, endo uh, mycorrhiza here you sorry endo uh, rhizosphere okay here you can see that is a lot of space in which you can uh, see okay so that is the schematic diagram then again i told you there are three types this is the deeper layer of the tissue that is known as the vascular tissue and the inside this particular region is known as endo Uh, rhizosphere okay there are lot of spaces occupy you can see the spaces you can see and you can see outside the cell you can see where it uh, reaches the soil that is known as a ecto rhizosphere and this junction is known as the the middle region is known as the rhizoplane and this particular region is known as a rhizosphere okay the plant root that con that is interacted with the soil okay this is soil okay and that is known as the rhizosphere okay so this is known as the rhizosphere region three different types of rhizosphere that is rhizoplane rhizosphere and ecto rhizosphere and endo rhizosphere you can uh, see now as i said in this particular area the microorganism have lot of uh, chances to live here okay they interact each other they interact with the soil they interact with the plant and they have a lot of roles to play in our ecosystem so that is what we are going to see the interaction between microorganism in a soil okay the interaction between microorganism in soil the microorganism as you all know that is bacteria fungi algae and some protozoa okay like then i have told you about archaeobacteria and certain viruses vary in shapes size and surface morph morphology their shape size and surface morphology can be varied and this microorganisms are the backbone of all ecosystem without microorganism there is no process will be happening no decomposition without uh, this one there is no tropical level will be happening then we have discussed in the previous class the microorganism play very vital role in the biogeochemical cycles like carbon nitrogen water etc okay and the nature to have formed a complex ecological interactive web within the ecosystem due to this microbial population they are able to produce a lot of ecological interactive web within the ecosystem okay and this microbe especially bacteria engage in certain symbiotic relationship with the other organism or larger organism they are residing in the soil don't think like they are able to survive independently 
for their survival and growth and daily activity they need to depend lot of other organism in a symbiotic manner okay and this microbial interactions are ubiquitous diverse and critically important in the function of any biological community and are crucial in global bio geochemistry okay that is ubiquitous and diverse critically important in function of any biological community and are crucial in the global bio geochemistry and this interaction between two microorganism or two populations are classified accordingly whether both the populations are getting benefited or positively affected and one of them benefit from this association sometimes both the population will be getting benefited due to this kind of association or one population will be getting benefit from this association okay or both the populations are negatively affected or one population is affected or both the populations are affected like that this kind of interactive nature is known as microbial interaction so this microbial interaction between different organism can be between the same species the same species of a particular genus or between different species okay or between same genus or between completely different genus or between completely different families okay so the uh, the interaction can be in different level between the species within the species or with the different species or same species or different genus completely a different genera i hope you understood what do you mean by genus and species okay and this interactive patterns within this uh, food verbs or uh, i mean soil systems are either positive that is known as win win interaction or negative or loose interaction or neutral uh, interaction okay either positive means both the organism or at least one organism will be getting benefited due to this particular interaction negative means both the organism will be affected and they have a detrimental impact or one population at least will be having a detrimental impact or neutral where there is no net benefit due to this particular interaction so that these are the major types of uh, interaction so the this interactions are three types one is known as positive interactions or cooperations okay cooperation okay or beneficial interaction cooperation or cooperate they getting benefited okay negative interaction competition okay there is competitions for the limited nutrients for their survival they fight each other and that interactions are harmful they affected one another or neutral this is very rare this neutral interactions are very rare both positive and negative interactions are most predominant okay so the microbial interactions are beneficial interactions or harmful interactions okay and there are this positive interaction beneficial interactions are symbiosis commensalism proto cooperation and this harmful interactions are parasitism amensalism and competition these are some of the example we will see in detail okay so what are this positive and negative interactions okay and this interaction is first Uh, i mean uh, uh, studied by a warder a clyde ellil okay so here you can see his photograph okay so here he pr proposed a theory called ellil's principle okay that is known as a density dependent uh, interaction so the population density the number of microorganism present in a particular habitat if you take along x axis and the growth rate with the respect to the time how many number of cells are dividing if you take that is known as growth rate okay that you take along y axis in the case of a positive interaction when the population density is increases the growth rate is also increases then once it is reached an accurate accurate level both the populations are almost getting equal then they'll start fight each other then what will happen then it will be going a neutral level okay so that is known as a positive interaction 
but negative interaction you can see initially the growth rate in a particular community is very very high the population density if you take along x axis and the growth rate if you take y axis then it will be initially it will be very very high you can see then due to two populations are coming and closer they fight each other finally the population density when the time in the growth rate is increased the population density is drastically coming down finally almost reach their uh, i mean i mean no their uh, i mean uh, uh, their uh, removal from that particular ecosystem okay and that is known as the density dependent interaction so what do you mean by microbial interaction and density dependent interaction is uh, that is known as allele principle okay so positive interactions and negative interaction positive interaction what i have told uh, here it is a uh, if you summarize positive interaction increases the growth rate of a population with the increasing population density okay positive interaction which increase the growth rate of a population with the increase the population density when the population density is increases the growth rate is also increases so what will happen which predominate at lower population density they which predominate at a lower population density the negative interaction which decreases the growth of the population when decreasing the population density okay which decreases the population density here you can see that when the population density increases the growth rate decreases okay and this predominant at a high population density finally to predominate at a high population density so both the diagram you can combine together this is a population density is a combined effect what will happen when it is positive interaction when the growth rate is increases the population density is also increases then the maximum limit which will reach then it has reached the maximum limit then the growth rate is reached the maximum then uh, they start utilizing the limited nutrients from the system and around what will happen when they uh, when they uh, compete each other what will happen they will fight each other this microorganism will be reduced their population density is reduced finally they will destroy from this particular i mean from the ecosystem they totally remove uh, with the, or very low content of microbial population will uh, exist and this microbial interaction more clearly positive interactions and negative interaction can have more and more growth the positive interaction such as mutualism centrophism or synergism commensalism or proto cooperation okay these all are positive interaction negative this is known as win win interaction okay negative interactions are predation parasitism competition and amensalism okay commensalism is a positive interaction amensalism is a negative interaction now we will discuss if you look in microbiology if you if you ask your friends in microbiology those who are studying in microbiology they have studied one one unit about all this particular interaction but since it's an open course we are going to discuss very briefly by citing very few example first one mutualism so mutualism as you know mutual okay together okay uh, for both the organism it's a positive interaction this is obligatory relationship between two population obligatory means strict they are strict relationship between two population the ecological interaction between two or more species where each species has a net benefit due to this interaction both the organisms are getting benefited this mutualism is otherwise known as cooperation or symbiosis okay symbiosis okay symbiosis or cooperation because they are uh, i mean uh, mean cooperating they are undergoing cooperating cooperation and or symbiosis so cooperation is a uh, increase in the fitness through the within the species intra specific interaction okay so what will happen due to this particular interaction both of them they start uh, getting benefit the one population they will try the other organism to fight against the a particular condition and they will be getting fitness and they survive together and they will be interacting both and both will be getting benefited that is known as cooperation then symbiosis then two species living in a proximity and maybe 
mutualistic parasitic or commensal so symbiotic relationships are not always mutualistic okay symbiosis then two species living in a close proximity that may be mutualistic sometimes they will be parasitic we will discuss sometimes they will be commensal there is a positive interaction and negative interaction but generally they undergo a positive interaction so what are the popular example for mutualism one most popular example is known as lichens you might have studied in your plus 2 okay so lichens next one is endosymbionts of protozoa next one is other mutualistic relationship here you can see as a plant tree you can see when you look the plant tree will be some organism it is simply that is attached to the plant tree like this you see a big tree some organism okay so due to this particular interaction this organism they are getting a surface to grow okay that is the plant okay and this organism protect the plant and how this particular green organism will be getting benefited because they get a surface and how this plant will be getting benefited because these are green organism they are able to synthesize for i mean photosynthesis they are able to make their own food material that supply to the plants and other organism okay so both the organisms getting benefited so we will discuss then one is lichen next one is certain uh, the organism that is present inside the protozoa then other type of mutualistic uh, relationship this my i am sure that you might have seen in a, okay in a particular rock or a wall okay here you can see some of the organism these are known as lichens what are lichen it is a symbiotic or mutualistic association between algae and fungi okay the algae okay and fungi is known as symb uh, that is known as lichen it is a combination of two organism okay the algal partner is known as a phycobian and fungal partner is known as mycobian okay so how they will be getting benefited so fungus they are not able to synthesize the food material uh, by photosynthesis that will be supplied through the algal component and the algal component they are not having any habit uh, that they, they don't have a, uh, a, a an ability to survive in extreme condition that or decomposition will not be able to happen then this fungal part will be absorbing nutrients and supply to the algal part so they will be attached in a very hard climate like rock or wooden okay some uh, I mean uh, some surface okay all those things you can see colored this thing you can see this is the most outstanding example of a intermicrobial mutualistic relationship in the i mean uh, plants and the soil okay so that is another important thing next one is there are two important uh, types of uh, i mean interaction that is that this types of uh, i mean uh, types are uh, uh, types of lichens are acrectose lichens folios lichen and fruticose lichen there are three types of uh, lichen acrectose lichens are uh, at, i mean uh, they are tightly arranged folios and fruticose lichens are uh, they are loosely attached okay then this this is first is acrectose is very strongly attached okay but these two are very loosely attached to the component then the next one is the commensalism so what is commensalism it is also a positive interaction why it is known as a unidirectional interaction so in the case of mutualism both the populations are getting benefited but in the case of commensalism one population get benefit while other population is not getting benefit but there there is not a problem for them okay due to this interaction one population get benefit but other population is not affected this relationship is known as a commensalism this is not obligatory okay and the unaffected population have either no benefit or no negative i uh, mean uh, negatively affect they don't have a problem okay if they want or they don't have a, they will not get any benefit but other population will be getting benefit at hence at least one population is getting benefit other is unaffected that is known as it is a positive interaction the term commensalism it is a word called mensa mensa means table that is table scrappings the number of physical and chemical basis of the relationships are very very important in the case of commensalism 
an example is uh, the modification of a habitat for the better survival for a second population okay so i hope you remember about facultative anaerobes facultative anaerobes are the organism they are able to survive both aerobes and anaerobic condition aerobes means in presence of oxygen they are able to survive anaerobes means in presence of carbon dioxide without oxygen facultative anaerobes they are able to survive both the condition okay so facultative anaerobes uses oxygen and lower the concentration of oxygen that favors the growth of many anaerobic bacteria wherever facultative anaerobes are present they uses oxygen and lowers the concentration of oxygen okay they uses oxygen and lowers the concentration of oxygen what do you mean by lowers the concentration of oxygen carbon dioxide is then accumulated so that condition is best suitable condition for the growth of anaerobic bacteria for example a growth of bacteroid species in human gastrointestinal tract due to the reduction of molecular oxygen by facultative anaerobe called e coli okay so the growth of in our body inside our intestine lot of bacteroids are present in the human gastrointestinal tract okay and what will happen how they will be able to uh, able to survive there this bacteroids are anaerobic organism and how they will be able to survive there and you know that the presence of e coli so there are lot of e coli bacteria are uh, present inside the i mean uh, present inside the uh, uh, intestine okay and this e coli bacteria will be reduces the molecular oxygen and thereby this bacteria is able to survive there that is what facultative anaerobic is unaffected both the population do not compete for the same substrate okay so here facultative anaerobes is unaffected because they can uh, live in the presence of oxygen or an, uh, with the absence of oxygen also and the bacteroids can uh, live with the absence of oxygen that is what i told the uh, facultative anaerobes are unaffected and both the population do not they will they won't compete for the same substrate so the next one is synergism this is also a positive interaction synergism is otherwise known as a photo cooperation or syntropism okay proto cooperation or syntropism okay so here both the population get a benefit it is exactly like a mutualism but this is not a obligatory okay M mutualism is an obligatory one but this is not obligatory both the populations are able to survive in the natural environment on their own although the association gives mutual benefit okay so they, they 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 will come together and they do all the process together and they survive together okay both the populations are able to survive in the natural environment on their own although the association gives the mutual benefit so the one population can easily replaced by the another and it is very difficult is almost exactly like mutualism but it is very difficult to analyze one of the population is benefited or commensalism or whether it is a obligatory one or mutualism okay so this is neither commensalism nor nor a mutualism okay so that is another important aspect so still controversies are going on which is i mean the best example for a synergism and so another important case is that is known as syntropism this sometimes this synergism is known as syntropism because the syntropism is the interaction of two or more population that supply each other for their nutritional requirement okay so they interact together in the soil and uh, of uh, two or more population that supply each other for their uh, nutritional requirement example is known as cross feeding okay say particular example in a particular ecosystem compound a will be there that compound a will be converted by a population called population 1 and this compound a converted into compound b by the activity of population 1 and once compound b produce the next population the population 2 come into picture and this compound b will be converted into compound c but this population 2 they are able to convert b to c not a to b okay population 1 can convert a to b and population 2 can convert b to c okay and this population 1 cannot convert b to c and this population 2 cannot convert a to b so a to b will be done by population 1 
and b2 c will be done by once it is b is produced then population 2 will come and b2 c will be that and once c is produced what will happen both the population will combine together and they will degrade together and they will utilize the energy and the end product this is example is known as cross feeding okay this is an excellent example of a centrifugal the next one is amensalism okay amensalism it's a negative <laughs> interaction why now we are going till now we have been seeing all positive interaction commensalism mutualism and uh, uh, centrifugal or synergism this is a um, positive interaction now negative interactions are that is antagonism okay commensalism that is a negative interaction is otherwise known as antagonism one population produces the substance that is inhibitory to the other population okay the first population is unaffected but the second population is uh, affected okay so, so what will happen one population is having no benefit but the next population is having a detrimental benefit impact that is why it is known as an amensalism both the population will come together one population produce certain substances that is inhibitory to the other population and the first population is unaffected by the inhibitory substance or gain competitive edge okay inhibitory substance means there are certain chemical substance produced by one organism that will inhibit or kill okay or affect the growth of other organism that is known as uh, chemical inhibition because most of the cases the inhibitory substance is a chemical that chemical will go and bind other organism that will be adversely affecting the other organism example is antibiotics okay so antibiotics is an antagonistic association between two organism in which one is adversely affected okay that is known as anti anti means against biosis biosis means life okay against the life okay due to certain substance production that produce against the life next one is uh, allelopathy okay that is known as chemical inhibition of one organism due to the release of the substance acting as growth inhibitor so what will happen allelopathy is a uh, one organism they produce certain chemical they will go and uh, i mean interact with other chemical and they totally destroy the other population that is why it is known as amensalism because one population is not affected but second population is affecting okay that is uh, known as amensalism so this is a complex amensalism there is a complex amensalism in natural habitat you know that that is virucidal fungistatic or bactericidal virucidal means uh, they are able to kill virus sidal means killing okay fungistatic means they are able to inhibit okay Fun fungus bactericidal means they are able to kill bacteria okay so there are virucidal fungistatic and bactericidal okay so all these terms my dear students you should know the organism established in a habitat it may eliminate the other population in the habitat if the organism the first partner if it is uh, predominantly grow in a particular habitat they will produce certain substances that will inhibit the growth of other organism say for example production of lactic acid or low molecular fatty acid by some organism okay so what will happen some organism they will be able to produce lactic acid that's an acidic ph will be reduced or low molecular fatty acid then again ph will be reduced so due to that particular things uh, the other organism will not be able to grow so e coli is unable to grow in rumen uh, the presence of volatile fatty acid is produced by anaerobic heterotrophic bacteria we have discussed what you mean by heterotrophic bacteria heterotrophic bacteria are the bacteria that uh, depend their uh, main energy uh, that is carb um, their uh, energy from the I mean, car I mean, carbon-based or uh, uh, organic carbon. That is known as heterotrophic bacteria. Okay. So what will happen? This heterotrophic bacteria produces certain volatile fatty acid. So that fatty acid will go and inhibit the growth of E. coli. They are not able to survive in the rumen. Rumen in the uh, that is inside the uh, body. Okay. So that is known as a uh, amensalism. Next one is parasitism. Okay. That this is again a negative interaction. 
that is on a cost parasite interaction okay what do you mean by host the 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 region in which a particular uh, organism is uh, depending for their survival that is on a host okay parasite means the population that benefit from that relationship the parasite that benefit from the relationship with the host okay they derive a nutritional benefit from the host they will attach a particular host and they will eat the host okay that is specific relation that is a long period of relationship physical or metabolic so the uh, parasite will go and buy, uh, go and attach to the surface of a host and they will survive very long time in the host and they will uh, i mean uh, get to their physical support and metabolic properties okay and the parasite is generally smaller than the host okay there are two types of parasite one is ectoparasite ecto means inside next one is endoparasite so what do you mean as the name indicate it is there what do you mean by ectoparasite the parasite ecto means outside okay endo means inside okay the parasite that remains outside the cell okay the parasite that uh, always remains outside the cell is known as ecto parasite okay then endoparasite the parasite penetrate deeply into the host the parasite penetrate deeply inside the cell and they live there that is known as a endoparasite example viral parasite okay viruses are the obligate intracellular parasite now we are talking about covid 19 virus sars corona virus okay this virus will go and multiply in a host that is why it is so dangerous okay in a living system they will not be able to multiply anywhere else they will go inside a living body inside our lung okay it will go and bind okay and uh, they will go and bind uh, that is obligatory intracellular parasite viruses are obligate strict intracellular parasite they will go inside the body and they will uh, grow there okay and this viral parasites are they will inside inside the bacteria inside the fungus or inside the algae or inside the protozoa or inside the human or inside the animal or anywhere they can uh, live okay and the parasitism contribute uh, disappearance of the uh, i mean a certain bacteria called uh, fecal organism in aquatic habitat okay the parasitism in the in the aquatic water the river stream etc there are lot of contamination lot of bacteria are there okay there are certain viruses also and that viruses will completely eat the bacteria and they will destroy in the water so viruses are cleaners okay they will clean the water actually so that is known as viral parasite the next one is predation okay predation another important negative interaction is a predation okay so predation is a negative interaction which uh, relationship with the parasitism exactly almost the same to the parasitism here the relationship is a predator prey interaction okay so one organism is a predator which engulf and digest other organism that is known as the prey which organism is the predator that is known as the one organism is predator which engulf and digest the other organism called the prey okay this is a not a long duration uh, you know that parasitism is a long duration relationship but uh, predation is a short duration relationship the predator is larger than the prey like a host and a a parasite okay parasite is larger than the host similarly predator is larger than the prey okay prey means p r e y okay so as the prey population increases the predation follows which overcome and producing a decline in the prey okay so once the prey population increases the production the predation follows finally overcome and uh, producing the decline or a uh, uh, reduction in the growth of the uh, prey finally the prey population is rise or increases and the predator population also moves upwards okay if the prey population rise the predator also will be goes upward if the prey is not there predator will not be there if prey is there then predator will be will, will be there prey is present in a particular habitat predator also will be coming okay if prey is not there then predator also will be will not be there okay so that is known as predation then this is an example of a predator uh, prey interaction here you can see an amoeba like uh, this is a uh, protozoa okay here you can see they are uh, trying to digest this are bacteria okay this is an electron microscopic picture okay they are trying to eat the bacteria they you can see something like a sac like structure they are coming they are closing they are taking and they 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 are engulfing this particular bacteria inside here you can see 
this is the uh, uh, paramecium okay a particular protozoa you can see a rot like lot of bacterial cell you can see this bacterial cells will be eaten by this uh, paramecium okay so inside the cell you can see that is heating okay so the en uh, engulfing okay through this particular particular site this is the predator prey interaction next one is the competition as the name indicate this is a highly competitive competitive or negative interaction okay so competition is a negative interaction both the populations are adversely affected with respect to their survival and growth okay if the populations are two microbial communities are interacting what will happen the pop the both the populations are adversely affected with respect to their survival and growth okay the population achieves lower maximal density and lower growth rates than their involved in the interaction so here the populations achieves lower maximal density they achieve the lower densities or grower growth rate than they individually involved so there occur when two population uses the same resources when competition happen if two different organism they they use a different things then it will not be having any problem but if both the organism utilize the same substance then for the substance there will be competition okay then it will be a limiting nutrients or some nutrients or some uh, space okay competition occurs for any growth limiting substance such as carbon nitrogen phosphorus okay oxygen iron water for anything there will be competition between the organism so what will happen due to this particular competition both the populations are affected okay so once the, uh, the item is over both the organism they will fight each other and they will uh, destroy then the next one is antibiotic we have already seen this is also a negative interaction the biological interaction between two or more organism that is detrimental to at least one of them okay there are two important uh, interactions will be there okay the interactions will be there and there will be two or more organism that is detrimental to at least uh, one of them okay so the antibiotics are a antagonistic association between an organism and the metabolic substance produced by another okay the antagonistic association between organism and the metabolic substance that is produced by another okay one organism will be produced a certain substance that will be adversely affecting by the next organism okay so that is caused by the release of metabolites okay uh, release of metabolites or cell component okay release of the metabolites or a cell component say for example the relationship between antibiotics and bacteria in animal and disease causing pathogens okay the relationship between antibiotics and bacteria or animal and disease causing pathogen the antibiotics will be secreted by the bacteria that will be secreted Uh, to the organism that is already present in the body that organism will be destroyed the study of antibiotics and its role in the antibiotics antibiotics drug okay has leads to the expansion of knowledge in the field of science okay so the antibiotics is one of the important uh, how the drug will be interacted with the uh, kill the uh, other organism okay so these are antibiotics that's all dear students we can conclude today so so many things you have discussed what are rhizosphere what are the various types of rhizosphere and then what do you mean by rhizosphere regions okay rhizosphere three types ecto endoplane and uh, ectosphere okay so the interaction between the microorganism in soil types of interaction both the positive interaction negative interaction what do you mean by positive interaction what do you mean by negative interaction what do you mean by microbial interaction density dependent interaction okay allele principle we have seen okay what are the characteristic features then what are the types of positive interaction what are the types of negative interaction okay mutualism what do you mean by mutualism okay why it is a, a positive interaction what is commensalism what is synergism and syntropism all three are the i mean uh, Uh, positive interaction why they are positive interaction what are typical example at least one example you should tell okay then amensalism parasitism predation predator prey interactions
predator prey interactions uh, are some of the important uh, interactions okay so these are the reference dear students okay so we have already told you i mean uh, this is the important thing the uh, i mean i have already told you uh, this uh, microbial ecology fundamentals and application you can use all other microbiology textbook you can so thank you very much dear students for listening this particular class so this is a beautiful picture that is an interaction between two organisms okay so that is an example of a mutualism actually okay so thank you